Now let's turn our attention uh, to this rather touching story. Spread a Smile is an organisation looking to provide entertainment to children in hospital. Accessing play whilst they're being treated is key for children as it enhances well-being and minimises the trauma they're going through. However, according to their stats, 30% of chick kids are offered toys and less than 1 in 10 get a special visit from an entertainer. Well, Spread a Smile currently focus most of their attention on London and the South East, but are looking to change that and spread more joy to across the country. Henry has been speaking to their CEO about their work. Into the uh, So first of all, play is so important in the healthy development for any child. And, and imagine a child in hospital, there are far fewer opportunities for them, to, for them to play. So it's even more important that we are there providing them with those opportunities. And it's, play is important because it helps with their emotional well-being, it helps to reduce anxiety, reduce stress, helps them cope with the unfamiliar and frightening hospital environment and it and it and it and it provides a much needed distraction imagine for a child in hospital who is spending days weeks months sometimes years and they are missing out on so much of their childhood so much that they're not getting to do so they're missing out on so many opportunities and it our entertainers are there so we send in fairies, magicians, singers, um, artists, therapy dogs, and we will spend five to 10 minutes at the child's hospital bedside, just bringing them some much needed smiles. And it's one of my favorite things when I get to go on the visits, although I, I don't get to entertain the children because I can't, I can't <laughs> sing or do magic or anything like that. But, um, but one of my favorite things is to watch the parents and watch them watch their children and watch their children smiling and be happy. And some of them have even said to me, like, I just, it's been so long since I saw, since I, since I saw my child smile. You know, and it's just, that's, that's an amazing, amazing thing to see. Say abracadabra, say abracadabra. Has it gone? Open your hand. Open your hand, Nathan. What are the, some of the maybe touching stories that have resonated with you? But as you mentioned there, the parents also, they go through so much trying to help their child. What do they also say? Because it must, it must feel uh, a little bit of relief, a light relief. Yeah, I mean, there are, I mean, there are just, there are so many stories. And so when we've, you know, when we've taken in our therapy dogs and there was one little girl and she wouldn't, she wouldn't eat. And actually she would only eat when the therapy dog would come in and she would break a biscuit in half and she would give half to the dog and she would eat half herself or, you know, other, I don't know why, for some reason the therapy dog stories always stick in my mind. Um, or, or another one when a child just was with their physiotherapist and just refused to get out of bed and walk and they really needed to get up and do that. And suddenly as the therapy dog comes into the room, they're suddenly, they're suddenly, you know, getting out of their bed and they're smiling and laughing and then suddenly they're, you know, they're FaceTiming with their brother and sister afterwards and they're telling them about this amazing thing that happened to them in hospital. It's really interesting listening to, to you, you know, talk about these touching stories. So obviously so so passionate to try and help these children. Uh, with the NHS struggling at the moment, with waiting times and so on, is that having a detrimental effect as well on, on children and the fact that maybe they might not be getting as much playtime as, as they should be as well? Well, listen, I think we all know that the NHS is, is massively, you know, is massively stretched. But we work really closely with the, with the with the teams in hospitals to make sure that we're there giving them giving them what they really need and actually really being able to help them at a time when they when they really need it because as you say there are they have fewer resources available so they they come to rely on us even more um, and one of the really amazing things we do we call them our bespoke visits but essentially if a child is having a particularly hard time perhaps they're nearing the end of their life or they're having a really difficult time during their treatment. Um, a member of the staff at the hospital might call us in to do a special visit for that child and whether that's, you know, we've, we've taken in one of our entertainers dressed as, you know, dressed as Elsa from Frozen and, 
or one child who really wanted to see Batman or, you know, another child who's really missing their dog at home. And, um, you know, that actually they can go in and it's so calming for them to stroke a dog on their bed. And it's and it creates memories for that family in hospital. And they're not just seeing their child as kind of sad and, and lonely and isolated. Suddenly they have some memories about that child being happy and smiling and laughing. And it's it's a really special thing. I'm gonna hit What's the plan to try and continue and grow the charity to make sure that you can reach out to even more children across the country? Our ultimate objective is to be everywhere, providing what we what we do, our, our unique entertainment for every single seriously ill child in the country. Right now, our focus is, is predominantly on London and the South East. But we are very excited this year that we're going to start delivering in-person visits to some hospitals in the Northwest um, and that we just continue with, with what we're doing. So we have 82 wonderfully talented entertainers who work for us on a, on a freelance basis and they will continue to spread the smiles, spread the love, spread the joy. We also organise events for families. So. To, uh, about two events every month and we'll take whole families on days out so trips to the theatre or tea parties or days out at the zoo and it's really important for us to include the siblings in those events too because as you can imagine siblings are often overlooked when there's a seriously ill child in the family and they are just really special they're just Again, like I said before about, you know, creating those memories in hospital. Actually, these are opportunities for families to create some really special memories together, some happy memories. There you go. You can head to Spread a Smile's website uh, for more information about the work they do around hospitals in the capital and beyond. Uh, right.